Welcome. Now we're going to do some practice dihybrid problems. And like always, you need to read the directions first. So in this case, we need to do symbols, parents, gametes. Remember, that's something new from monohybrid. Punnett square, and then answer any questions if it asks for it. I do want to make a note, a couple little things here, that if you have the term homozygous or heterozygous, in front of the first trait, then those terms apply for the second trait. What that means is that if I have a trait that could be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous, then I can apply that one term for both. So if I have something like uh, black, which is a dominant trait, and tall, which is a dominant trait, I won't know which way or what to use. But if I put heterozygous, that means it's going to be heterozygous black and heterozygous tall. I can also use the word homozygous. If they're different, then I would need to put a, another word in front of that. So just keep that in mind. Also, to help save some time, you can draw arrows in your Punnett squares if the offspring are exactly the same, which means the order of the letters if the genotype has to be identical and then just make sure you include that if you're answering any questions in your count. So let's go ahead and do number one. So I've got black fur dominant to white and curly tail dominant to straight. So I've kind of already started filling a few things out. So if I have black fur, so that's going to be a capital B and white and then curly is dominant and we're going to use T's. And my first pig is going to be a pure black with a straight tail. So pure black, homozygous dominant, and a straight tail. The only way it could be a straight tail is homozygous recessive. Crossed, homozygous white pig. So white, again, homozygous recessive. Curly tail. Curly, in this case, is a dominant trait. So I don't know if it's going to be homozygous or heterozygous. So I go back to the word that was used in front of the first trait, which is homozygous. So that means it's homozygous curly tail. So two capital T's. Always go and double check your symbols, double check your parents, and then we're going to make our gametes and definitely double check your gametes. So the gametes, remember we're going to use the FOIL method. So that's going to be the first pair and then the second pair, and these are going to all be the same. Notice that I am putting, I'm sticking with the color or B's first, so just to be consistent. And then these are all the same also. Okay, so there's my gametes. And then I'm going to move the circles just means eggs and sperm, just to keep them straight so it's not just a string of letters. So I'm going to put my first parent on top, and my second parent will go on the side. Okay, then I'm going to recombine, and now I'm going to pay attention to the dominant allele put first to help me answer the questions easier. So I'm going to do my B's, so big B, little B, big T, little T. These are all the same, so I can draw an arrow and then the same going across. That means all 16 have that same genotype. And to answer my question, it wanted to know what will they look like. Look like is phenotype. So in this case, let me go back to my symbols. I look at the first letter of each trait. So big B is black. So I'm going to do heterozygous black with and then heterozygous, so I can use the same term for both, curly tail. And there are going to be 16. Now, if I wasn't paying attention, if I just put one, that would be one out of 16. But in this case, 100% are going to have heterozygous black with a curly tail. Okay, let's do number two. So now I've got chickens, rose comb, single comb. I've had that before. Rose is dominant, so I'm going to do big R, little r, and 
it looks like I've got color, so black is dominant over white, and I'm going to use B's for that. I'm going to cross a homozygous rose black rooster, the male, so that would be homozygous rose is two capital R's and a black rooster. And remember, it's going this word is going to apply for both terms. Okay, and then cross with a homozygous single comb white hen. So single comb, so two little R's and then two B's. Gametes, in this case they are all the same. Okay, so all four are the same and all four are the same here. So now we're going to move our gametes down into our Punnett square one in each of the open boxes, and we're going to recombine, paying attention to the dominant allele first. So big R, little r, big B, little b, and just like before, they're all the same. It didn't ask any questions, so that's all I have to answer on that one, just more practice. And then our last and final question, we have fruit flies, and we have red is dominant over white, long wings are dominant over short. Tells me to use R and T, so red and white, long and short. And then I'm going to come back to it once genome phenotype. So there's a cross between a white eyed male with a long wings, so white male, so two little R's, long wings. Now, long is a dominant trait, so it can either be homozygous or heterozygous. So I need to continue reading, carries the recessive gene for short wings. So that means it's going to be heterozygous. Okay, and homozygous red with short. So homozygous, so big R, big R, short wings, homozygous recessive. And then just double check the parents. Now let's do our gametes. So here's my first one, little r, big T, my second one, little r, little t, third, r, big T, little r, little t. I just think it helps to visualize it by drawing your gametes, and then these are all going to be the same, okay, all four, and I would even, you know, if you're in a rush and you're doing a standardized test, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but it's good practice to write everything out. And then we're going to move our gametes down and then recombine. Now, going down, they're the same, but I need to be careful because they're not the same going across. Even though it carries the recessive allele little r, my t's are different. So we'll write these out. Just be very careful with that. And then this one, I needed to know geno and phenotypic ratios. So let's do genotypes first. I'm going to write it out. Since there's more squares, if you want to just make a mark as you count them, that might not be a bad idea. So I need to include everything. So big R, little r, big T, little t. So I've got one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight that have that exact combination. My next is a big R, little r, little t, little t. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my ratio is eight to eight. Phenotype is what does it look like? And so don't put symbols. So I look at the first letter of each so my capital R is red, and then a capital T is going to be long. I could also put hetero red long. Okay, that's just more exact. So the combination with red and long, so I've got, again, it's eight. And then my next combination is red and short. And again, I have eight. I could also do the same thing, hetero, red, comma, short. Now short can only be homozygous recessive. So I could put 
heterozygous red, homozygous short, or I could just put short. It's up to you. And so my phenotypic ratio is, just happens to be 8 to 8 again. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will see you later. Have a good day.